Welcome to the Fit Filiate Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Kirkman, and sitting alongside me is Tony Ronke, the founder of Fit Filiate and all round CrossFit OG. The mission of Fit Filiate is very simple to protect the affiliate model. Our sole purpose is to help affiliate owners and coaches attain freedom. We aren't here to tell you what to do, but to instead build your ability to believe in yourself. Enjoy the show. Or 12, but now he's driving forward with the CrossFit Health Initiative and the face of all things um, that. So excited to have you on, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Uh, Tony, happy birthday and welcome to 43, right? It's a good, <laughs> yeah. it's a good age, man. So far, so Solid good. Age. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'm stoked to be on here with you both, though. So thank you for having me. No, and yeah, I, I, we, we will. We spent some time on the call or on a call together on Monday, and it's funny because like mm. I feel like I'm the only person in the CrossFit space who's not spent time in a room with Mike G. So like, and it's hilarious because we're both native New Yorkers and Northeast roots, and it's, we were laughing about that, and we say it on here a lot. Like that is a funny CrossFit cousinship where I'm like, how in the hell have we been in this space for 20 years basically, and have Crazy. never, and everybody else has been in the room? Like I have like. Half of a fit clients client are like, Oh, yeah, Mike G did my level two. I'm like, I ran into him one time 20 years later at the summit in, in Dallas. That was the first time. Well, now we've talked like three or four times since then. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Like, we're making up for lost time. Uh, but oh, it that's is a funny crazy. part of CrossFit, too, though, I think is that exact thing, right? It's just like, Yeah, yeah, like, well, we grew up together basically. Well, I mean, our story is just intertwined, you know what I mean? So, like, the same types of experiences with the same people over the course of you know 20 years it's like we we have probably you know what i mean like it seems like we 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 go back for years even though right yeah this is the fourth time we've talked you know (laughs) and it's it's really funny even from this side of the world like i've never met any of the the people in the crossfit ecosystem that i've been following along since 2010 2011 but i feel like i know everyone because you see their faces so often and you think oh here's a video of mike g i know what it's going to be about i know what he's going to sound like so it's kind of <laughs> it's like we all feel like we know each other even though absolutely yeah. floating around there there's yeah, definitely absolutely. magic in that for sure i think like you know and i think it's easy to overlook it especially when you're a part of it like it's always fun i pick on lisa a lot and pick for being on her prison colony over there and nobody ever gets to <laughs> to make it to australia everybody in australia is going to like immediately just flame this podcast because i say it so much but like <laughs> we, i bring people on here who like i've just known everybody for so long and like she'll get like i'll introduce them in like email and she'll just get like starstruck she'll be like really you're not going to give me the heads up that like nicole carroll's coming on or like k-star and i'm like they're just people right when we've been around for so long <laughs> yeah. all of us are like not that we're special. It's just like that's the cool part of CrossFit. Is that like there's just there's so many rad people in it. You just you once you get outside of it and you look, you're like, oh yeah, I guess those people are really, really, really cool. Like there, there's some truth to that. But you grew up with them, where it was like, I mean, I worked seminars with Nicole and, and Kelly, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, like teaching the deadlift and stuff. You know, it's and then they they kind of grown to become who they are, but you still remember those old times of just like, Hey, we just taught seminars and you know, we're just yeah. trying to change people's lives. You know, like that's still the context. That's like the, the, the baseline of it all. It's interesting. And it's always like some random story. Be like, remember that burger or or like, it, it's, it, it, you just have so many of those things where we all had like a coming of age, like being on seminar staff is for sure. One of the coolest gifts on the planet, no doubt about it. But even if you're not like, I think, you know, the rooms of people that, as a CrossFitter that you got to be a part of and just in terms of like going to your L1, your L2 or any of the SMEs mm-hmm. you went to and like other people, like I still know people, I run into people all the time that like, I remember they were in my L1, right? Like one of the seven times that I took the L1, like, you know, mm-hmm. and you, 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 and you stay in contact with them. But the thing, like, I think that part of it's very cool. It just doesn't get a lot of attention. I think a lot, but, and, and I think, Maybe it's not the same anymore. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not that way, but I doubt that that's the case. I, I highly suspect that it still feels the same way when you, you know, there's 30 of you in the room listening and getting your life changed. Like you can't help but bond over that. And then like yeah. you do get to have those those cool people in the room. I, I mean, I personally know that I can remember. I'm really good at remembering faces from the room. I can almost anybody same. comes up to me. I can almost always remember their face. Admittedly, the names are always really hard. And like, it's always funny because they come up and they're like, do you remember me? I'm like, weirdly enough. Yeah. It's kind of a weird thing I have, but I do actually remember you and I can remember yeah. you were in Boston or you were, you know, in, in Springfield, Missouri or something like that. But like, I'm like, don't remember your name though. 
<laughs> God, uh, I'm the same way. Same way. I can, I mean, I, you know, I've done probably 400 seminars and yeah, a lot of times people come up to me and ask me if I remember them. And I do, like I can remember the location and maybe what they did, like what their, their profession was, you know, prior to becoming a CrossFit coach or anything like that. But the name, yeah, I can't remember for the life of me. It's crazy. Uh, well, anyway, speaking of origin stories, that's one of my favorite places to start with. And I, yours mm. is a hard one because I think so many people do know you and and are aware of it. But I love to bring OG people onto the podcast. I think it's so cool to 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 shine that light back on like those those super super old days, like the forum days. But to give everybody like a, an insight as to like where you started, like I guess give what is the how did you end up in CrossFit? That, that part I don't think I ever asked mm. you. Yeah. Okay, so 2004 or five, I was still in the military and me and a buddy um, started doing CrossFit uh, just at like a Navy base gym and following it off of main site and doing it completely wrong because we didn't understand it, right? So, you know, imagine coming from your traditional training program, which we all have, finding CrossFit on the website without any trainer, any real explanation of what it was and seeing something that's like 21, 15, nine, you know, thrusters and burpees or something. And then thinking after your 21 thrusters, that's your first set. You go to the water fountain, you take a sip of water, you know, yeah. like, I talk to your buddy. All right, now I'm going to go do 21 burpees. And, and at the end of it, you're like, yeah, wasn't that bad, you know? So that's yeah. kind of how we did it for a while. And I was also really heavily in the triathlons at that time. Um, I got out of the military in 2005. I spent a year in Tucson just training with the triathlon team and racing. And, uh, yeah, I didn't even work. I just kind of hung out. And then I realized I had to be an adult and actually work and do stuff. So I moved back to Atlanta. And one of my uh, one of my old high school buddies who also went in the military, who also was doing CrossFit, um, was coaching at CrossFit Atlanta, which was like the 30th CrossFit affiliate, right? And uh, Dan McDougald owned it at the time and owned it for a long time and uh he's like you got to come here so you know i was still training triathlons in atlanta not a at that time not a great location for riding a bike uh so i was like you know what? i can laugh because i've been there and i i know exactly i was like gonna get i'm in trouble i'm in trouble yeah 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 and i was like you know I don't need to get hit by a car. Maybe I should change my my mode of training back to CrossFit. Yeah. So I, I stepped foot in CrossFit Atlanta. This was 2006. And uh, they made me do, you know, we didn't have the on-ramp programs uh, like we do now. So they had me do Fight Gone Bad as prescribed. And, man, it leveled me. I was a 145-pound triathlete at the time. And that it just leveled me. I just remember laying on the ground, which for, for which felt like hours like drunk, like feeling like I was drunk and I couldn't get in my car because I didn't think I could drive home, you know? Yeah. And there was something about that, oddly enough. I don't know that that's always the best approach these days, but back <laughs> then there was something about that that was like, oh man, I got to do this. Uh, this is the way to do it, you know? And uh, that was it really. That was like the bug. And I started going to CrossFit Atlanta. Man, this gym was at that time, Dan was renting a garage that was a set. Okay, so there was this guy who who um, was like uh, he was like re like furbishing cars, right? So he mm -hmm. he had his house and he had a garage. Then he had another garage next to his house. This was like in the middle of Atlanta, and we rented that garage. So it wasn't even like a industrial space it was like a garage next to somebody's house who yeah. had nothing to do with crossfit um and it was dusty and it was dirty and you paid by putting money in a cigar box and uh you know the rings hung from the ceiling with chains and but there was something magical about that place you know um and and you can just kind of feel it when you went in there and i remember talking to dan and i was like look i want to help you grow this thing you know can you help me get my level one and dan was friends uh with greg and got me into a level one in uh raleigh north carolina and uh man like dave and pat and nicole and annie and uh eddie lugo and you know 
was the whole cross the school bus back then. Yeah, Greg and man, I think uh, Brendan was there. Uh, that is wild. And, uh, yeah, Rob Miller, old Rob Miller, climbing Rob yeah. Miller from Santa yeah. Cruz. Like the like, there's so many up there. They were all yeah. there. And uh, I feel like that's what is the case back then. They just traveled in like a big gypsy bus. Everybody <laughs> went to the same like because nobody knew what to think, and it was like, wow, there's so many cool people at this place at one time. Well, if you look at like if you look at that level one, I think they were wearing blue shirts at that time. I, I think, and if you look at that picture, it's like half participants and then half blue shirts. Yeah, it's just this massive photo, right? And there's so many, so many people there. It was awesome. I remember listening to Greg, and he did most of the lectures. And then I drove home, and I must have made 25 phone calls about like how amazing this seminar was, and how it was going to change fitness. And you know, and at that point, I was in a program uh, for exercise physiology, and I was like, "Man, this is way different. This this makes more sense to me." And anyway, so yeah, that was the start of it. Um, and I was at CrossFit Atlanta, and I, I fell so in love with the level one. And Dan at the time, he would uh, he would offer like equipment support to any of the level ones that were coming to the East Coast, and really like the Southeast would get like one a month at that time. It's you know they were, it was still growing; it was mm-hmm. they weren't happening as frequent. And so he'd bring like medicine balls, maybe some barbells and stuff, and and I'd help him. And then over time, and I'd help him bring that stuff. You know, I I started doing a little coaching there, like. Hey, you can run the pull-up group or you can do this. And and then slowly it became like a the level two, like the first, first, first level two when you interned to get on staff. And I slowly started interning, but I didn't really know what I was interning for. And then finally uh, they were like, hey, do you want to get paid for this? And I was like, well, that sounds amazing. And uh, yeah, that was it. Got on staff and that was the, the entry point into working for CrossFit. And I, Officially, I started that intern process in 2007, and then officially on staff 2008. Yeah, that's crazy. I always love these stories, and I don't have no idea if anybody ever gets any other value out of them. I personally, I just ask them out of my own personal interest because I just there's something to be said about watching the nostalgia in everybody's eyes when they re- relive those stories. And it's not like we don't tell them that often, but I just always am looking for an excuse to go back to that time. And it's so fun to bring mm. people on and have them talk. And like, hopefully people listen to this. They're like, wow, what a crazy story. Cause it was such a strange time to be a part of something that I don't think any of us really had any idea was ever going to continue to like, you know, we talked about that on Monday. Like, how are we still here 20 years later? Now, that's a pretty amazing thing in itself. Right. And there's definitely stuff to tap into there. But the interesting thing about back then was, especially in seminars, like it was a circus. It was nothing like it is now, you know, like it was essentially just showing people like, Hey, look what we can do. I mean, you know, I remember like pistol box jumps, you know, single leg box jumps and, you know, Nicole Carroll out overhead squatting some big dude. And it was just like, we just had to like, I don't know, show people something like kind of just blow their minds and really get them you know, hooked on it and, and thinking about it and talking about it. And then slowly it progressed to like, okay, now we need to really educate these, you know, our participants on how to coach and uh, what this means to be a coach and how to run an affiliate and all these things. But at the early days, it was like a traveling circus. I mean, it really yeah. was. And, uh, but there was also something a lot of fun about that. You know, it was, it was nuts. Um, it was, it was, it was a very interesting time. And I think that the 20 year thing just blows my mind. And, you know, I always used to say, I mean, there's there's so much to that that's more than just the workouts, right? I mean, I, it really is. It is has to do with a lot about the community. And and I do also think, and this is what we talked about, when was that, Monday? On yeah. Monday, it was, you know, there are some other changes that take place, whether it's yeah. physiologically or mentally, that kind of keep you involved and keep you pushing forward and keep you challenging yourself mm-hmm. with people. Right, which I think is a very important part of this entire thing. Um, as I always would say, like, man, if you were just to say, hey, this is CrossFit, and you gave me a sheet of paper and said, here are 10 CrossFit workouts, and instead of going to CrossFit Atlanta back in 2005 or six, just go do this on your own somewhere, I may not be doing it right now. Mm-hmm. No. Even if they are, and they're effective workouts, right? Like, they'd make you fitter, no doubt. But if you didn't have the people around to experience this with, would you still be here? 
And I like to me, like that's life. Like that's like a that is a um, like a like a, a great analogy of like what life is. Like to me, life mm -hmm. is all about your journey and your experiences mm -hmm. and, and, and the adventure. The adventure is not necessarily doing things on your own. I mean, you know, some people can get away with that, but for most of us, the adventure is doing things that are meaningful with people who you cherish and love and are, are a big part of your life, right? And and that's yeah. what CrossFit becomes. And I think that's what keeps people involved for so long. Because who the hell does a fitness program for 20 years? Yeah. The same one. Right. Yeah. Especially in today's day and age, right? Like I, for me, even as a person, like I, I, there's nothing in my life that I have done as long as I've done CrossFit ever. And like, no, you know, and, and that's not going to stop. Right. I'm, you know, even if it was ceased to be called that, I'm like, I'm still going to do this hodgepodge of constantly varied functional movements and like, and learn about myself every single day, every single morning yeah. at roughly the same time, mm -hmm. I'm still going to continue learning about. And like, that's what we had talked about on Monday was that like, I'm here, you're here, we're here 20 years later. And it's not because of the workouts, right? Like it's because of, you know, you know, that context, that conversation was about the mental health part of it, which is really one of the things we'll jump into, but like, dude, it's the personal growth. Like there's, I don't know if back then. I don't think any of us knew. I don't think Greg even really understood it back then for the most part. I think he knew he was onto something big, you know, in that mm -hmm. regard. But like, the, the, I don't think anybody could have truly appreciated. I know like, you know, dri driving down to, to New York and going to, to workouts in Central Park. I don't think that I had any idea that like, this is going to be the thing I was going to be doing in two decades. I was like, this is just the thing that I found on this random website that like completely crushed my soul. And I was like, I don't yeah. do that again. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, and, and yeah, I, it's funny. We all have that same sort of looking back 20 years ago, whatever we all have like that same sort of got our complete ass kicked story. And, and now today, I, I think people still have that experience, even though it's all relative. I think everything has kind of changed, but yeah, like all of us were like, man, that was like one of the most traumatic experiences in my entire life. But yeah, I'm still here, still coming back. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. Like it was traumatic, man. It was like I never <laughs> failed at something so bad in my life, you know. Like I just was like, wow, my my buddy just destroyed me in the workout, and you know, and every time I'd go back, he tried to teach me how to split jerk, and I was like, I don't know what this movement is. Like this is so hard, you know. Snatching was so, I mean, it was, like, I just couldn't figure it out. I remember. And we were dumb back then, so we'd always try to do everything prescribed when you weren't supposed to. But I remember doing Isabel, and first off, thinking that it had to be squat snatches, and just getting spit out the back, you know, like <laughs> trying to snatch, <laughs> flying backwards, barbell, exactly. And just like, just sitting there in that, trying to figure this out over and over and over and over and over again until you got it. And that's the lesson, right? Like, there's some really interesting lessons and and development that takes place and that type of thing now maybe you don't have to do that prescribed way you probably shouldn't but the like sitting in there and really trying to make those neural connections to figure out how to do this well is the lesson yeah. like that's the development yeah. yeah and and that that in itself i think encapsulates the staying power of the whole thing and you and i had talked about that and like like the the secret in many ways to cross it is the, the exposure to failure like it's it's one of the first things for so many of us. Like if we we really strip down everybody's origin story, there's there's like a common thread, and that red thread is that like, man, I have never failed at something so badly as I did as my first exposure. Like my first experience, I think I've said on here before, was like filthy fifty. Before it was even really called filthy fifty. Like the yeah. same thing. I was yeah. like, oh, this is like a half a chest day. This is ten <laughs> reps, fifty reps each one. Like same thing. I'm gonna do ten. I'm I'm gonna do my my do my fifty reps. I get a drink, whatever. And like just just getting absolutely annihilated, even taking rest it took me like forty nine mm -hmm. minutes to do that first workout. And like <laughs> in a globo gym, it, it, but I think people listen to this. But if you just understood how fucking weird you looked in a globo gym trying to do a split jerk in two thousand seven, mm. people mm. were just like, "Are you doing a, aerobics with the barbell? Like, what is even happening over there?" And now you can't walk into a gym. You can walk into the highest end boutique Equinox. And somebody's oh. split jerking in the corner, right? Like, oh yeah, the, the, the impact that CrossFit has had on this and on fitness in general, well, it'll never get the respect that it deserves. But I think if you if you grew up in that era, you're like, you're doing CrossFit, you're doing CrossFit, you're doing CrossFit. You might not say it, but I know what you're doing over there. Like, it's just a, well, it's yeah, it's great. It's become normal. So if you're if you didn't experience what a gym was like 
in 2004 or yeah. five and you're in your 20s and your experience like in a global gym is what it is now okay. you don't realize that this was not it <laughs> like they didn't have squat racks with with uh there's no platforms uh, platforms you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and and there wasn't even a pull up bar the sled thing you had was like a universal and... machine yeah like it was just that nothing was it there. yeah that was it it was yeah. like those weird pull-up bars and you would try to do stuff on there uh, i got a story about that too so another time there was this guy uh uh his name was matt hunt i don't know if you remember him yeah but he was doing bar muscle ups and the gym that he was at was a globo gym and the only pull-up bar they had was the one on universal and when so he was loud. doing bar muscle ups his arm slipped Ooh. Oh. and he got caught between the pull-up bar yeah and the crossbar and it snapped mm-hmm. and he hung he was hanging there by his arm and they had to go grab him and pick him up to get him off and Ow. uh yeah that's, how that's why I got thrown out of my globo there. gym. Is that exact? I didn't break my arm, but like when you're trying to kip a pull up on the universal machine while somebody's trying to do tricep extensions, and the whole oh, thing they don't is like that. Clang, clang, yeah. clang. You're like, yeah. you're like, sir, um, we're gonna let you out of your contract. I was like, well, I didn't right. want to get out of my contract. They're like, we're letting you out of your contract. Don't yeah. come back. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Guess I'm gonna yeah. have to do this by myself now. It's like that exactly. that early video of Spieler doing, you know, Fran in the Globo gym on the pull ups yeah. on the cable machine there, and like yeah. you can just see in the background oh, yeah, yeah. as people walk past, they're just it's like, that wake up, that movie. It's, what's he doing?" You know, and and it was big headphones on. Yeah, it had his big headphones <laughs> and Eric O'Connor right next to him, you know, with the timing and stuff on their little this little stopwatch. But yeah, it's just when you see him <laughs> doing it on that piece of equipment, you're like strict pull ups, and and you just you just think, "Wow, it's just." You, you now can go into any gym and they'll have some sort of functional space where that's you right. can Dude, throw yourself everywhere. around and it's okay. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like I was saying, like turf, I was in New York, right? I was in Long Island and went to a, an LA fitness up there and it's like, man, the beautiful turf and rogue sleds and yeah. rogue kettlebells and Dynamax medicine balls and you know, a whole line of squat racks and platforms along the side and like, mm-hmm. They had a rogue echo bike, you know, and it's crazy. Like, who's the I corporate think- purchaser for you guys? You just open up the rogue website and be like, yes, I'll take one. And like, take they, one some of those gyms are just like, and then nobody's either, either they're not using them or anybody's using them. Like, they're doing like random, like stretching in there. And I'm like, you guys just don't even realize how great you have it with all this stuff I in know. here. Like, and you I got like know. 200 grand of the rogue catalog just chilling. And now and it's hanging every- out. Yeah. And I think something that's also overlooked that CrossFit impacted is the, on the, like the underground minority sort of sports like powerlifting, you know, brought weightlifting back into life. Like mm. when I started to, after I started CrossFit and I dipped a toe into powerlifting, you know, the first year I did it, there was like five girls in the event. Mm-hmm. The next year they had a wait list for nationals and then you had to qualify and it was ridiculous. And they were all, you know, they would make fun of me and go, oh, CrossFit, uh, you know, cool kipping, you know, what I, and, and I went, but if it wasn't for CrossFit, you didn't just sell out this event. Like That's nobody, right. you're still got a tiny little garage gym that nobody knows about and nobody's coming, particularly not women, while these, you know, giant dudes are clanging and banging. Like you're not selling out your women's event. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah we, we would. I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. And yeah, no. CrossFit made it okay, particularly for women, to use a barbell and to throw heavy objects around and, you know, for those of us not built for speed, but who liked picking up heavy things, it was like, oh, I never, here's something in the fitness space I'm good at. I, you yeah. know, I suck, sucked at running, sucked at everything. I went, oh, here's something that sets me apart from my peers and I'm actually good at this thing and I enjoy it. So it gave us an outlet that you could go and feel like a badass that yeah. wasn't provided in, in you know, traditional going to your, um, attack class or body pump where you just couldn't keep up with the steps and like, oh, this is crap. I'm out, you know, it, and I, I, th- I think, I think that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's often not recognized enough, I think is for what it's done for the whole ecosystem, you know, and mm. it's been, you know, I know that um, uh, Mike Bergen has talked about how USA weightlifting was dying off. Then mm-hmm. CrossFit has injected life. It's now one of the most watched Olympic sports rather than one of the least watched. Like, well, USAW, yeah. I think, at least gave some credit there too. Cause, like, mm. uh, you know, for example, like 
they're, they're doing activations and, and certifications at, at Wadapalooza now, USAW is. Mm-hmm. USAG, I think, is never, ever, will never give credit to CrossFit for the fact that, like, gymnastics is a dying sport. And, like, now, like, here's the thing we know about CrossFit. Like, if you procreate as a CrossFit, you're probably going to put your child in gymnastics just because you're like, I'm terrible at this. You're not going to be. Like, mm-hmm. it, but they'll never That's get so the true. credit. Yeah, and it's the, the long tail implications of so many things that have just, none of that could have ever been known. And like to to your point of like, it just being a circus back then, right? He's like, it was a circus, but it was mostly like, we're just all kind of figuring this thing out. And like, yeah, there's so much that's cool about it. And I, I I just love sharing the stories. Everybody listens. Cause I'm like, maybe they know, maybe they don't know. I don't really care, but it's always fun to bring everybody on. Like you EC, everybody's always got that funny story. And you're like, man, yeah, same, same team. But all of us are from the Northeast. There's, there's a, it's great. It's great. It's great. And like, I think, it, it, uh, it brings a level of appreciation for mm-hmm. where things are now, right? Too, because we had, a, like you said, like we figured it all out on our own. I mean, you know, the <laughs> random YouTube video, right? Some book, you know, on how to make a kettlebell to out, like, snatch <laughs> by like reading a yeah. book, you know, which is not easy, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, and now, I mean, the resources you have now to learn any movement that can be applied in CrossFit methodology. It's endless. Like it's all yeah. there. It's crazy. Um, it's well, great. The fact you can go buy this stuff is still like I can go to a Dick Sporting Goods or any like. And I just <laughs> I, the other day I had to go get a new dumbbell and, and I bought a new medicine ball because they were there. But I'm like, you don't know what it's like to cut your basketball up and fill it with pennies and gravel so that you have a medicine ball. <laughs> like, and, Dude, and I'm seriously. glad you guys don't have to do it. Like because you you will break your nose. Trust me. I'm telling you right now, you will break your nose with that thing. But you can do. You would be able to do wall balls with it. But yeah, we anyway, had those, and then like getting kettlebells was tough too back then. Like what is like Pavel's was- company was the only place to get them from? Like Iron Dragon. Dragon or Dragon mm. Had ordered Dragon from Moore, Russia, yeah, and they it. would come in like this this massive like crate thing and you were like mm-hmm. did i order like something that's this is radioactive and it would just be like <laughs> and like oh and it would just i had my own kettlebell and then i broke it and i was like yeah. Oh, that's yeah. yeah um but dude yeah we've come a long way and i think that's one of the the point of you coming on here is is essentially the role you've moved into um and we would want to talk mm. a little bit about that because like you know not only are you that guy who suffered through your your first workout back then but now you have moved into essentially the the one man band that is the director of crossfit health but like what a cool position that is so what's that like what's that been like for you to move into that role i suppose i mean that's a big uncharted territory for sure just like the old days yeah yeah you know it's been interesting um the goal of when i moved in there was to really take uh crossfit health and um turn it into something that was more relatable and accessible to affiliate mm-hmm. owners, coaches, members, and our, our healthcare professional physician community, right? So um, the CrossFit Health has just morphed a lot throughout the years. I mean, when Greg first started this thing, it was more about really exposing the problem, yeah. you know, exposing the mess these you know modern these ills of modern medicine and so it was like hey here's the problem and you know and then it kind of went into the wild health thing and um and then that changed a little bit and now they are a um an approved provider which i think is amazing uh i think it's a cool option for people if hey if you've done everything you know you've you've you're been eating well for years weighing and measuring food and you're training very consistently and you're working on sleep and stress management and you still have some lingering things then by all means like let's go check out your genome and see what's going on right you and, and see if there's something else that maybe you have food allergies maybe you have something else that's going on maybe you have some predisposition that says that hey you should eat this way or train this way right so i think like there's there's definitely some some uh, or a lot of utility there given on where you are in your development but what we wanted to do with health is say, okay, like, well, what is, you know, when you think about CrossFit, the message has always been simple. So the health message also has to be simple, right? The, the CrossFit the message is, hey, you want to live a better life, like, just do constantly varied functional movements, execute high intensity, and eat real food, and find out how much food fuels the tasks at hand and doesn't provide extra body fat, and then do that with other people. 
And like, man, you, you set yourself up pretty well to live a pretty damn good life. Right. Like, and that's, that's, that's what the, the message has always been. And then, so with health, it was like, okay, well, you know, when we're thinking about health, it's, it's real, really like, how can, how can we reach more people who really need CrossFit? You know, mm. um, when you think about this, this big goal of reaching 30 million active CrossFitters by 2030, when you think through that and you just look at basic statistics, you think, well, you know, if 60% of our population has a chronic disease in the United States, then, then probably the majority of, of those extra, what are we at now? Let's say we're at 5 million. Mm -hmm. the extra 25 million a lot of them are going to have a chronic disease so how do we get them into the affiliate because if we're honest with ourselves a lot of people are still very intimidated we've come a long way but there's still a high level of intimidation of For walking sure. into an affiliate where there are rings and barbells and pull-up bars and you know people not a lot of clothes on and dudes with their shirts off and throwing around stuff right like it's still it's not People are welcoming. Sometimes the environment is not. Yeah. Right. So the the key to potentially getting those people into the doors of the affiliate is starting to reach the physicians and the healthcare professionals. And there are a lot of ways to do that. And the 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 simple message that we had created, and now I'll, I'll kind of tell you where this is going, but was bridging the gap between fitness and healthcare. How do we bridge this gap between what happens in the affiliate, all the magic in the affiliate, and the people that are being you know, entered into this healthcare system, which if we're being honest, is not necessarily a healthcare system, it's a sick care system. We do a lot of prescribing medications to improve symptoms, but in reality, we're never really going after the root cause, right? It's not the lack of medication that makes people sick. It's some type right. of lifestyle behavior that's been done over and over and over and over again that has caused these problems. And, you know, unfortunately, um, with a lot of the people that are going into the healthcare system, it's 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 not a willpower thing. It's an environmental thing. Like we've we've now been put in such an environment where, you know, not moving a lot and eating a certain way is like it's very easy to do the wrong thing. And to do it over and over again, based off the foods that are in front of us and the way that our environment is set up and all those different things, right? So, so the goal was bridging the gap between fitness and healthcare. And, you know, I, I would always just think to myself, man, imagine how powerful it would be to walk into a clinic and your doctor didn't even say anything about CrossFit. They just had a CrossFit shirt on. Yeah. And, and they looked like they were in pretty damn good shape. Like yeah. that alone is enough mm to make somebody rethink their misconceptions about the program, right? So, you know, so the goal was, okay, how do we, how do we bring all these together? How do we educate affiliates? How do we educate coaches? How do we educate the community? How do we educate and, and, and network more healthcare professionals? How do we get them out there doing this stuff, learn from them, and then filter that back down? So that's what we've, been doing for the last couple of years. And then over the last, man, I got to think back now, maybe it's, let's say six months, um, we started to think, okay, we're at a point now where this goal of bridging the gap might be something that we can actually now um, kind of push off to our healthcare professionals and our physicians that are already in the space. And that's where this idea of a cross and medical society kind of spawned off. And whereas these, there are a cohort of MDs and healthcare, other healthcare professionals, but specifically the MDs, because they've been part of this thing for quite a bit of time and doing some very interesting things out in the field. There are this MDL2 group that they've gone through their initial MDL1 and then MDL2. And they've, they've been out there since you know 2017, working in the clinics, talking about CrossFit, going into affiliates, creating programs, all these different things, and really leveraging their expertise, their experience, and their reach to make a bigger difference. And that's kind of what we're looking to do with this medical society. So when we start to build this medical society, 
where it's going to be led by physicians, now we can start going into other conferences. We can start recruiting and networking into other other uh, physicians and healthcare professionals out there. We can start to infiltrate academia a little bit better, right? We can take their experience and start creating very specific education for affiliates based off of medical literacy, things like how to use HSA funds, how to use FSA funds, how to write grants and, and try to get grant money from your your local government, how to get scholarships, how to create programs and, and, and stu- to, uh, to uh, fundraise so you can get money to offset costs of memberships for people who need this the most and start to get to the filter in through the, through the uh, clinics, right? Um, how we could potentially set up through this medical society um, a pathway for uh, CrossFit coaches with higher credentials, let's say the level three, we're kind of working through this, but let's say the level three to, to intern and, and work underneath the physician so that they can actually stand and pass the exam for the, um, the um, oh man, I just forgot the name of the, the National Wellness and Health Coach Board. Um, oh, certification. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the big health coach one, the ones that can work yeah. with clinicians and work in hospital systems. And, you know, imagine if you had these CrossFit level threes or level fours, whatever we decided it would be, but let's say level threes that now are, are board certified to be health coaches that can work in clinic can work in hospital systems and also work into uh, work in the affiliates as coaches. When you're talking about bridging the gap between what happens in the clinic and what happens in the affiliate, the bridge becomes the coach, right? And they're the Mm -hmm. ones that are are bringing people from here to here. Hey, you're here, you're on medication, you're treating symptoms. These symptoms are going down. Now we got to fix the underlying problem. We're going to bring you in here. We're starting to teach you how to move better, how to eat better, and how to be around people who have very very similar like-minded behaviors to people you want to be to hold some level of accountability and, you know, push you towards, you know, a better, healthier version of yourself. So that's what we're doing. Um, where CrossFit Health will go from there likely is start leveraging more of what's happening within the society and what these healthcare professionals and physicians are doing and using that as content and education to provide, let's just call it some level of validity of what this program the methodology and community can do to re- mm. re- reduce risk and reverse chronic disease that's a lot in there um man <laughs> <laughs> not in a bad that's way actually. Let, me, let me let me rephrase that. that that there's a lot of excitement in there at least for me the thing that i'm probably maybe more so than the average person excited about is the health space of cross or the health implications mm. as the cross health implications only in that you know, particularly to that conversation, right? Which is like 30 million versus let's call it 5 million. Like there's a 25 million person gap. Like there's, you know, the question is not about the efficacy of CrossFit, the fun, the engagement, the environment, all the things that we know to be true about CrossFit. The question is, what the hell are these people doing to not come in the gym? Like, what is the thing that's keeping them out of there? And like a big part of that, you know, is, you know, to your point about it being an intimidating sort of, environment like listen i've done this for 20 years and i still don't like to drop in when i travel or like you know and and i'm good i can do all of those workouts for the most part as prescribed sometimes maybe not but like you know because certain environments are certain different things and like i think there's a certain degree of of elevation professionalization that comes out of this conversation that's like hey you know, let's take a look, let's take an honest look at what we're doing to get the right people in the room because if we obviously spend a lot of time with affiliate owners and we're a little bit biased on that side of it, but like they're all, you know, essentially distracted by the same conversation. Most affiliates are spending all of their time trying to get the attention of the same people. Like, you know, they're they're all competing over the number of crossers. And we've said it on here a thousand times. Like I love crossers. Crossers are great, but they're the worst customers for you to go after because they don't have pain anymore. Right. Like their, their Mm. solutions are, you know, they're, they're kind of just in management. And so when it comes time to consider, you know, a multi hundred dollar investment or, you know, potentially, you know, changing their patterns of behavior, they're like, 
Yeah, no, I'm good now at this point. Like I've been doing it long enough. And those are the people that, you know, everybody's fighting over. Like I lost two people to the gym down the street. I'm like, so what? go get the new people. There's for, you walk in a grocery store, go to the airport. Like there's no shortage of people yeah. who need oh, every yeah. single bit of what you do. And, and I think personally, I, I know I was guilty of it too, right? When you spend so much time in our old days, like we were talking about, like you don't really think much about gen pop, right? We were just, we're so immersed in what we're doing and how cool it is. And then you got 50, 80, 200 people in your gym doing it. It's hard to remember what it's like to be in that situation, to be that person who's got to go to their doctor, who's scared to death because they've lost control of their life. Like they don't, you know, they're, they're, they're not sure what bad news is going to come out of it. And dude, that's not a reality that any CrossFitter lives at this point. And like no. that, that is something that is the thing, in my opinion, that has to get more attention. Cause like, I think what my fear in this is, and Austin and I were talking about this in Dallas when you were, when you were presenting is that like, you know, Austin was like, you know, some, I think, I think that's lost on them sometimes. And when it comes time to this CrossFit health thing, it's not that like they're not interested because every CrossFit gym owner loves this. They're like, yes. But then there's almost like this, uh, this uh, sort of naivete or, or maybe even a certain sort of uh, uh, of abdication where they're just like, okay, Mike, you keep doing that thing over there. Let me know when you're done. Like, they're just going to flood the door. I'm like, there's an opportunity here and you have to be involved in this thing. And like, that's why we were so excited to bring you on here. So I was like, listen, this is going to take work, but it, it takes interaction. And like, I think there's a huge part of this conversation. But I think yeah, it's got it. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think also, you know, it's just to to touch on that point, Tony, like when affiliate owners complain that oh, I just lost two members to the gym down the road and, you know, because it's easy to to get someone in that's, that already has had some exposure to CrossFit, they're, they're easy. The harder thing to do is to have a hard conversation with some of the gem pop demographic that we're talking about. And I think in large part, affiliate owners are scared and don't know how to talk to people without offending them or how to be honest with them without being, you know, mean or perceived as mean. And, you know, people are already in a fragile state and they're like, well, I don't know how to talk to them and it makes me uncomfortable. So then yeah. it's, and even though as CrossFitters we chase discomfort, there are there are times as affiliate owners where we hide from discomfort in, in, in many mm -hmm. ways. And, this is not a not a comfortable space for me to work in and I don't know how to relate to this person or I don't feel like I can. So then we just avoid it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I think that's a major part. I think there are a few few pieces to what both of you are saying on the affiliate level, or it's I don't think it's lost on affiliates. I think they're really excited about the potential. I think it's the application of it that that becomes difficult. I, I don't I don't know that they don't understand what it's going to take. It's actually doing it, right? So, you know, I, at least with your thing, I think a lot of times we think we have to have the answers right away yeah. to talk to people and tell them what to do. When in reality, we just have to be good listeners and ask the right questions, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's that's a huge part of 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 coaching, especially with coaching people who really need help is, you know, figure out like what, what is limiting them and what their driving factors are. Right. And, 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 and start using that to start answering questions. And I think the other part on the affiliate level is a lot of people when I'm having, when I'm giving these talks at, you know, whether it's the affiliate summit or, you know, I've been at Nicola Coins thing, I get this question and it's like, well, you know, how do we do this? And, and there's no one way to do it, but the the answer is like, you need to be a pillar in your community. If you're right. just gonna wait for people to walk in your door, you're gonna get the people that we're already talking about, Tony, right? Like mm -hmm. the, the ones that already do CrossFit, like they'll come mm -hmm. in, of course, because they like, they're their shirt on the CrossFit gym. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, so they either just moved here, they're dropping in or they're trying out a new gym because they didn't like the programming down the street, right? Like that's, yeah. that's why they're coming in there. But, you know, if you wanna get to, the people that are a little afraid of CrossFit have never done it, but really need it. Like you're going to have to get to the gatekeepers of those people. It means you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. You're going to have to go into the clinics, the, you know, hospital mm. system. You're going to have to go in there and start talking to people. You know, a lot of times we'll get this question. Well, you know, when I go in there, 
um, a couple things. One, there's a little bit of intimidation from the coach or the affiliate owner because they don't feel like they can speak to the healthcare professional on that level. And I think that's a big misconception because I think what mm. affiliate owners and coaches have to understand is that they are healthcare professionals and, mm. and maybe even more so because the job of the affiliate owner and the coach is to actually improve those lifestyle behaviors that actually create health and generate health, not reduce symptoms, not take away sickness, right? So there's, a, there's like, no, this is what you do. You make people healthier, right? So that's part one. Um, you know, I think uh, part two is people, a lot of coaches and affiliate owners want data. Uh, do you have research? Do you have something? I, I need to be able to convince people with a piece yeah. of paper that they can read. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I think, yes, that can be helpful. But, you know, I, I had this panel um, at the CrossFit Games and it was called Recure Chronic Disease. And I know that's like a very direct message, but the idea behind Recure Chronic Disease with this panel is we had, coaches up there we had affiliate owners in the room and then we had a lot of healthcare professionals and then we had CrossFit representatives right and it was like hey when i say with this panel we cure chronic disease the idea is we cure this together yeah. like it's mm -hmm. all of us it's not just crossfit it's like we still need healthcare professionals we need these physicians we need them to manage symptoms. I mean, medication is there for a reason. If somebody has a blood, blood pressure of, you know, 200 over 160 or something, they may not be ready to go into the gym yet. Like right. they're, that's, they're at a high risk. You might yeah. have to bring it down a little bit and get them to the gym, right? So my point to all this, let's go back to the data and research thing is like, when, when this question came up at that panel with weak or chronic disease and Dr. Chris Palmer is there, he said, you know what? Like, in reality, when you come up to a clinician, a physician, and you hand them a piece of paper, like it really means nothing. What really starts to turn that that dial is stories, real people. Mm -hmm. Like when you go into these offices, like bring bring somebody, bring mm -hmm. somebody that's in your affiliate that has had dramatic health improvements, and mm -hmm. let them be the the results the the proof of what you can do and i think that's huge that's like a that's yeah. something that i most affiliates have that and if you don't like you got to figure that one out right yeah there's a there's a big part of that that is you know for years obviously i i said this in seminars that everybody can tell me the definition of crossover but very few of you can give me the application and implementation of crossover right because like, like and that that in and of itself is is a very blanket statement, but really kind of what it says is that like, I think we talked a little bit about this on Monday, and this is sort of overarching, but like we tend to want to own information as opposed to apply information. You see this a lot as it applies mm. to cross. And like, it's funny when I, I've watched you give a couple of talks and then people do hit you with the like, do you have data, right? And like, and I completely understand where the, me the message is coming from, right? Because they're like, help me be more validated and when I have to present this information. But what's what I think is what is missing in that conversation is mm -hmm. what they're attempting to do is trying to create a training program versus a coaching program. And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is that like in a training program, your variables are essentially set. The person that comes in the door has to kind of fit into this certain sort of, uh, you know, ideal person to be able to achieve the outcome that you're promising. Because if it's not, you're introducing a variable that otherwise is unaccounted for in the experiment. And so you see this a lot when people mistakenly think CrossFit is a training program as opposed to an actual just a coaching program or a lifestyle program. Sure. They're like, you got to be, you got to, you think the point of an on-ramp is to get certain people into becoming a target avatar. So now they can move effortlessly through CrossFit. But like, you have to step further back and like Matt, who we had also talked about who's doing a really good job of this in, in Canada. Like Matt had the epiphany finally. They're like, wait a minute. This whole thing has been about assessment, which is all it is, right? Like the nine foundational movements are not the greatest movements on the planet for the simple sake of being movements. They're screens of movement, right? We don't need to, you don't need to teach them this, that they are then ready for CrossFit. You use that to, to help them to become, you know, to assess them so you can help them understand what to do and apply and implement the thing. And I guess I say all that because when, when it comes time to have this conversation with this, the other 25 million people, there, there might not be, there's a certain degree of cognitive dissonance there where they're just like, yeah, but like, they're never going to be able to 
but like that's because you're trying to apply a training program where the variables and the parameters are set. And like to your point, you said it, you're like, if instead you said, what brings you in today? What are you struggling mm -hmm. with? How can I help you with that? We already know one thing. CrossFit will fix quite literally anything you bring to it. But if you bring CrossFit yeah. to something without understanding it, the first thing you're going to get from that person is going to be resistance. So, and you, I think a lot of affiliate owners struggle with this because they think that that's the thing that they're selling is the, is the training, is the program, right? So like, I have to deliver this thing perfectly, but that was never what CrossFit was ever supposed to be. It was like, this is the most elegant solution to the world's most vexing problem because we can assess, address, and, and, and apply or implement this infinitely to any situation. And like, like yeah. you know, we, we see this a lot with, you know, with, with the conversation of like, it's the, it's the cure to chronic disease, but cross is not the cure to chronic diseases. It's, it's the cure to the behavior that leads to those chronic diseases. Right. And like, and it's right. also the solution on the back end. We still need drugs. We still need healthcare. We still need those people, but we need them. We need them to understand that like, Hey, you didn't have to, it's not off the couch, off the carbs. It's what do we do to get you to, to stay, to not even get on the couch in the first place. Right. Like, right. and that's the cross -it solution is in there. And I think if, if affiliate owners, understood that like to your point you said it it's like you don't need to tell them what to do you don't need to tell these people who don't know how to speak their language what you're going to do for them in fact don't do that like if you sit mm. you know susan down who comes and she's part of let's call it the 25 million you're like here's what we're going to do her head's going to explode right she out she's going you've lost yeah. her. Right. She's gonna be like and as soon as somebody runs by with a shirt over off or like they got 400 pounds overhead she's gonna be like this is not the place for me but if they knew that you know, Johnny with 400 pounds over his head once started just like you eight years ago. You tell the story, right? Don't you don't have to tell them what you do, show them what's already happened, but ask them what they need. And that's like always been the like that's the beauty of why CrossFit has always worked, is because it doesn't matter where you come from. <laughs> like it's gonna yeah. work for you, but you got to get them to have that epiphany themselves. You can't be like, I'm gonna change your life. They're gonna be like, Oh, great, here we go. Right. Like, and that yeah. part of it is a huge part. And and I think the conversation that you're guiding with health is starting to breach that, like hearing what you were talking about in Dallas, hearing, you know, you're attempting to tell them like, Hey, you don't need to be the doctor. <laughs> like, that's not what we're telling you to do. We're telling no. you that like you have the tool set, but it's a tool set. Let's spend time talking to people instead of trying to teach them. And I think you're Absolutely. doing a, that's a big part of it for you in this part now. Yeah, you have to talk to them. And I, I think CrossFit is a, and it based off of, you know, you think through the, the everything you just said, like CrossFit is a, a it's a, it's a self-efficacy program. Like you, you are talking to people and you're giving them, providing them skills to overcome obstacles, however small they may be to build confidence, to go after the next one. And like, and like, I think that's what coaches need to understand about, even movement like why mm -hmm. are we yeah. it, it's this weird thing that we've gotten so wrapped around making people move better for the sake of making people move better right and like what you know like we, it's we're going to reduce risk and you know we'll get them to move more efficiently and oh, that's all great but like that's great for a short amount of time like what am i really what am i really doing by coaching somebody getting them to get in a better position and then maybe making the movement easier or, or allowing them to get more weight on the bar or whatever it might be. It's like I've taught them or, or guided them, not even taught them. I've guided them into doing something for themselves that allowed them to accomplish a goal, which is now leading to increased self-efficacy, meaning like I now have a belief in my ability to overcome and you know an obstacle and complete this task. And if we as coaches can can guide people through that, however small it may be. It may be just pushing your knees out. How'd that feel? Did that feel better? Did your squat feel better? Yeah. Like, amazing. You did that, right? And, and we did that by pushing. It's not just for the sake of punishing people and making them move better. Like, they have to get yeah. something out of this, mm. you know? And, and, and it has to be, like, really meaningful to them. And it's when you can make that connection. And then the next time you give them a coaching cue and they do it and something improves and it makes it easier. And every, every time that is celebrated as a small victory, now you're building self-efficacy. It's the same thing you said with, hey, you know, so-and-so over there with the shirt off, you know, snatching 225 pounds. Guess what? You know, a year and a half ago, this is who they were. 
And, mm-hmm. and, and that vicarious experience of, of saying like, hey, you're in Africa, this person is pretty much who I am right now. Yeah. And now mm-hmm. look who they've become by being a part of this gym, this community, doing this program, being coached. Like, that's meaningful to me. That lets me know that, hey, you know, I could potentially be that person. That's mm-hmm. another boost in self-efficacy. So it's, it's largely a self-efficacy program. Like we're, we're teaching people how to have belief in themselves to overcome obstacles. Yeah, and stripping and them of that's objective impact. Trans- yeah. yeah, it's transferable into everyday life. I mean, you know, you know, we've talked about obstacles that we've both had. And man, at 43, some of the things that I've had to go through could have leveled me. And mm. having having some of this background and, and this experience and of of being able to overcome and and fail and overcome and get through hard things but do it with other people and being okay with leaning on other people um has been huge huge yeah. in improving you know overall well-being mental health physical health all that stuff to where i am right now yeah, no doubt it's i mean every yeah every affiliate owner will tell you that too right like you know the, it, it would make sure affiliate special it's community but and we talked about this a little bit but like when you really dig down and you distill that down, the, the thing that they're talking about is that we're, we're creating these ecosystems of, of positive outcomes, right? Where it's like, mm-hmm. you know, and, and for many people, it's the only place in their life where that is so repeatable, observable, and improvable, you know, positive mm-hmm. outcomes. And so, you know, to being a self-efficacy program, like, you know, stripping people of their subjective opinion of themselves that they would otherwise have when they go to the gym. They're like, no matter how I feel, like I still look like I'm a slug in the mirror, et cetera. But like in CrossFit, it's different because I might feel all of those negative feelings about myself. But based on the workout score that I just put up, like, hmm, might not be a PR, but wow, I guess it really wasn't even remotely close to how bad I feel about myself today. And there's power in that. Like, and you and I were, that's what we were laughing about is that like, there's a reason that we're all here 20 years later and it has everything to do with, you know, the affiliates ability to create that, those, those situations of fulfillment, empowerment and create that agency and gratitude that I think is only possible through, you know, the, the radical experiment that we all call CrossFit that gets to be exposed Mm -hmm. and delivered every single day. And my hope is of course, obviously the reason we built Fit is to help people create those ecosystems, but be proud of them, right? Like they don't need to be perfect in so much of, of what this comes down to in a lot of times is like people are so worried about teaching, let's say the, the burpee perfectly and telling you why the burpee matters and this, that, and the other thing. But like, if instead I just said, what brings you in today? And their thing was, you know, I wanted to be able to get up and down on the floor with my, with my grandchildren. It's a very different education conversation yeah. when I'm like, mm. do you think that if we can get through these with some degree of control, like it's going to improve the quality of your life. And they're like, dude, yeah. Like then it's a completely different relationship with arguably the most miserable movement on the planet. It has nothing to do with how well you can teach it. It has everything to do with how well you can relate it. And that piece is, that's the essence of moving from a trainer into a coach in so many ways. Mm-hmm. And I think like the health thing, and what's why it interests me so much and, and why I'm excited about the, the symposium that's, that you guys are now putting on in, in, in Texas, giving people access to this because that the, the transition from trainer to coach is, is essentially in giving and caring a little bit less about how well you teach it and, and caring more about why you teach it, right? Like mm. yeah. it's not so much in terms of like my ability to give the senior level thesis on the nine foundational movements, but I'm arguably, I think we could all agree like you can be ranked in two ways, like how well you can teach those nine foundational movements or how well you can relate those nine foundational movements. And I think anybody listening to this would be like, okay, the person who can relate the nine foundational movements is probably going to be way more effective, you know, in terms of outcomes, but also financially, et cetera. Like, and that's at the essence, it's like, you don't need to teach them. You need to relate it. And all that requires is stop teaching it and start listening to them. And there's so much opportunity there, I think, in regards to, bridging this conversation and so i do want to talk about the, the symposium a little bit too like i think getting people into those rooms getting people into an environment like what you guys are putting together in austin is a big first step to be like hey listen mm. these guys are going to care they're going to take care of the doctoring because like yeah. this is the people we have in our ecosystem and like they're fighting for you for this cause because they believe in it here's where you come in and it's not about yeah. your 
go take your MCAT and become a doctor and have all these conversations and talk about Lipitor and all these things. Like it's about like, Hey, so, so and so referred you here. I know you're struggling with these things. Let's take a look at how you move today. Right? Like, yeah. And starting with the relationship, right. And starting to relate the, the program to them and apply and implement it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think that's going to be the big takeaway of this CrossFit for Health Summit in Austin, uh, which is February 3rd, is you're going to learn a lot from these experts in these different fields, right? I mean, um, Rhonda Patrick, you know, Quadro, uh, Dr. Tom McCoy, uh, he's an interesting one. What I like about what Tom adds to the table is Tom wears so many hats within the CrossFit community, right? I mean, he's a he's a doctor. He's an affiliate owner. Um, he has this clinic right next to the affiliate, so they work hand in hand. Like when you think about what CrossFit, the model of what CrossFit Health wanted wants to create, and what now the medical society will take over and want to create. Like Tom has that, yeah. and he's going to be there talking about this stuff and how to how to like how to make a difference within the affiliate. And there's going to be some big takeaway points there. Um, and then Dr. You know, Tommy Wood, uh, who, who it's really interesting, his talk on uh, like de-optimization, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. hey, when we try to optimize too much, yeah. it actually be can become a problem, right? You try to optimize yeah. one, and because usually what happens with optimization is we try to optimize one part of health so much at the, at the detriment of the other one. It's like, well, maybe we de-optimize and we really just try to bring everything up together, you know, and it's, he's got a really interesting, but he's got the Tom, Tommy Wood stuff on cognitive um, development uh, with exercise. is also really interesting. He's going to yeah. throw some really cool things in there, but my challenge to any of the coaches or affiliate owners, um, or even other, the, the other healthcare professionals in the community that go is to take this information and ask some questions on application. You're going to get a, information from experts, like big time experts, in this health, wellness, and research field, take that information and really start trying to figure out its application. How can I take this and apply it to people within the gym properly, right? Yeah. You know, to, to make them live a better life, to help them live better lives. And it's not teaching them, it's, it's applying it through asking question, questions, seeing where people are, seeing how this information can be used effectively for them to reach their goals, right? And that's, that's gonna be the part of it. Um, that I think is going to be really useful there. Yeah. And I hopefully mean, like, this is step one. Like we, 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 we want to do more of these. So um, the summit's exciting from a business perspective for me, for a lot of reasons, right? Like if, if, if we drop the doctor nomenclature and we drop the health part of it and we just said, Hey, listen, affiliate owners, we already know you're already attentive to the conversation of needing more leads. I know this because there's an entire industry of people preying on you guys to sell you lead generation strategies. Like, so we already know you're out there looking for more customers. Yeah. What if I told you that you have mm. private access to quite literally 25 million plus people, essentially three out of every five people in your town will be paying attention to you and you don't need to run Facebook ads. You don't need to do yeah. any of these things. Like, would you show, they would obviously show up in droves. They would come in bus loads to it. And, and in so many ways, I think it's important that we we drive that point home to them. They're like, listen, we're not telling you to come to, to Austin. To, and let me be very clear. I'm telling you, if you're an affiliate owner or a professional coach, you're coming to Austin because it's a conversation that you need to not only yeah. understand, but you need to be a part of so that we can we can essentially make all of you guys mavens and they can weaponize this conversation and move them out into the community. Cause that's what this is going to need. Mm -hmm. This is the power of essentially, uh, essentially a just cause. So like if you're listening and you need more customers, you, the, the, it's basic business one-on-one. You have to enter the conversation they're already having in their mind. Many businesses will go very, very broke trying to put a conversation in their brain. And so if you're going to try to tell people why they need to do CrossFit, you're going to have just as hard a time as you've always had. But if you enter the conversation they're already having, which is doubt, health, medication, you know, chronic disease, sure. all these conversations, and then you can say, hey, but listen, I might have something for you. You've already entered the conversation. So instead of trying to Absolutely. tell your whole town why thrusters and burpees are the answer to their problem, why don't we start to understand what they're already fixated on, which is Lipitor, mm. it is, you know, it is, is diabetes, it is heart disease, it is these things that are taking out whole families. And let yep. you step into that conversation and be like, I'm sorry you're dealing with that, Mike. 
let's take a look at it, right? Like, and you don't have to say anything mm. more, right? And and I think yeah. the lessons and the skills and the tools and the environment that will come out of this summit and many summits like it that will come from it will be the 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 collective understanding, like, oh, Mike's not trying to turn me into a doctor. I don't need to, I don't need to change what I do and I don't need to put on my lab coat and I got to take all these courses and learn all these things that like, I don't know about, like, he's going to teach me how I already have everything I need to be successful. I just need to better understand how to apply it to the people who aren't paying attention to it. Yeah, and that's the, the conversation. conversations. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, that's the question, right? That's the question we get all the time. How do, how do I have this conversation? You know, how do I talk to either the patient or the healthcare professional? And I think knowledge is part of that for sure. And I think you'll get that at this, at the summit, but then it's, it's applying that to be able to have this conversation with people, meet them where they are, ask the right questions because conversation isn't, and I think that's where we get caught up on a lot of conversation. Is not telling people what to do? Right. Mm. It's asking them what they want, what they need, mm. and then proposing a solution. Okay. That, you know, I, I get it. I get that's where you are and that's what you want. And, these are limitations. Well, I think I have something for you. Like that's, that's what it is, right? If you go into the conversation with like, oh, you have type two diabetes, I'm going to fix it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, well, man, like, you know. Well, you're going to get uh, sued probably, so don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's much better to, to start looking at, okay, you do. Okay. Like, you know, what's, what's, what, what is, uh, what are some tough parts of your day? What's hindering you throughout your day? What are, you know, some areas that you'd like to fix? I'd like more energy. I'd like to lose a little bit of weight. I'd like to, you know, be a little yeah. bit stronger. And, you know, like, you know, you know, I, I think about, it was really, really interesting. I think about when I was a triathlete and I was starting to get back in the, starting to get in the CrossFit. One of the, and not being a sick person, but not being in shape. One of the things that I really wanted is I, I started to realize that even though I had a high level of endurance, I helped my dad move from house to house and he outlifted me and he was in his sixties. And I'm like, what the hell? Mm. You know what I mean? Now, here I am. I'm supposed to be this in shape guy, be able to move things. And my dad is just moving boxes all around me as I'm dying. And he's like, well, that's what I want. I wanted to be able to not only have endurance, but be able to move you know, be able to keep up with my dad and moving boxes and be able to move things for longer distances, that type of stuff. Right. So I think it's always just like figuring out, being able to figure out where people are, what they need, what their needs are. And then, let, you know, pr providing a solution, let them know you have a solution and working with them and asking questions along the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, you know, it's like two truths and a lie, right? Like, well, there's one thing that I know about anybody listening to this podcast, if you're listening to this podcast is that you have an unwavering belief in CrossFit's ability to solve quite literally any problem that you could throw at it. Like I would assume yeah. that to be the case. Like okay. any of us who have done CrossFit for any any extended period of time, and I mean by any extended, I mean anything more than six months, right? Like after after three months, your life has changed. After six months, you're unfucking recognizable. Like we know that to be true, and no one will ever take that away from you. We also know how frustrating it is for you to walk into an airport, to a shopping mall, or the grocery store, and be like. I can help every single one of you and <laughs> they don't listen. And I also know that there's another truth to that though, that all those people that you're looking at, look at you as the outcome, not as the person who went into that thing. And they say, you can't help me. You don't understand what it's like to be me. Right? Like, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is that there's that disconnect is the lie. That disconnect is, is the, it is the downfall. It is the, it is the root. It is the, it is the root cause of all of this issue, which is that like, we think that there is not a solution or we think that there's not we so we have to enter the conversation that they're having in their brain right like mm. oh yeah because we're both having it like we're both having it at the exact same time we just need them to understand that like there's two types of us and we can help you with this but that, that starts i think with conversations like this environments like this and and i'm really excited about the summit for people to go there and to leave there being like oh i already have everything i need to be successful that's not what this is about. This is how do we help them right. better see this thing? And, you know, and that's, that's the exciting part of it. And, you know, it, it, and just watching people come into that room, I think maybe there's, there's, there might be a certain sort of collective doubt from everybody who knows that the sun is coming up being like, well, what do I need to go listen to the doctors for? Like, what am I going to get out of this? And I'm telling you what you're going to get out of it is they're going to tell you the conversations that those 25 million mm -hmm. people 
are having with them and in yeah. their own mind. And if, if you had access to the private conversation that people were having in any degree of business, in any industry, you would be ridiculously successful. How do I know that? Because that's why social media exists. They get to see yep. all of your conversations. And then that's why you end up with an ad to Home Depot because you're looking for a random screw and they heard you talking about it with your mother at Thanksgiving, right? Like imagine right. being able to do that exact same thing in your business. Go to the summit, listen to the doctors, listen to the conversations so that you can better understand it. And then serve them the ad, so to speak, right? Like get them in the door. And that's the, that's the essence of it. Man, that is so true. You know, it, it, what you just said reminded me once again of that uh, panel we had at the Group games. And we'll, we'll release that soon. Uh, working at Home Depot. <laughs> just that when we had a chance to really let Dr. Chris Palmer loose and just yes. say what he wanted to say, you really got some insight into the mindset and the internal conversations that the person, the type of patients he deals with will have when they come into the CrossFit affiliate. And mm -hmm. if you're not aware of those conversations, if you're not aware of that internal dialogue, if you're not aware of that mindset, that story that they're constantly telling themselves, it is going to be extremely difficult to work with them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, extremely difficult. And that's what you get out of listening to these experts talk is an understanding of the people that they get to work with every single day and how like the conversations they have together and the internal dialogue, the mindset, the mindset that they have, the story they're telling themselves when they finally walk and take that first step in your affiliate. And you have to be ready for that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they will turn around and get the hell out of there. Hmm. And it's so much simpler than you think it is too, truly. And, and, I, and I don't say that to downplay it or say that what you do and what we do is not important. Like we are, the reason we're an elegant solution is because it is so simple. It's not easy, right? But it is so simple. Sure. <laughs> The program works. We know it works. How you apply it is all that matters. And it is always so much simpler. I, I can promise you if you're if you're listening to this and you're new in, in your journey and you're, you're a new coach, like I know it feels very complicated and there's so many things to teach, talk about, deliver, cue, coach, correct, etc. I promise you when you get to 10, 15, in 20 years into this, you don't care less. You just understand how much simpler it is to just be like, it's always been chicken, broccoli, and water and better habits. Like let's just keep you here longer. That's all that really matters. Like the longer I can be keep here you longer. here, the better this is all going to be. And that's the secret, right? Like just get them in the door. And the way to do that is we've got to, we have to meet them where they're at. And we've, you know, that, that cliche has been thrown around. I don't know how many times, but you want to talk about how to meet people where they're at and get them to where they need to be. Well, the clinic's probably the first place to look for them, right? Like if you want to know where the 25 million are, unfortunately, they're going to the doctor regularly. And I know that if you're listening to this as a crossfitter, you probably haven't been to the doctor in the last three years, truly. Like you should probably still go because there's reasons to do that, especially <laughs> when, you, when you get to my age and things are coming up. But like, you know, you got to go, but there's doc there's good doctors out there. And if nothing else, maybe you get that out of the summit. They're like, oh, wow. Like people like us do things like this. And like they're doctors too. And like, there's some hope for this healthcare system. They're not going to just try to give me Lipitor because my cholesterol seems high compared to all the other clients. Like, there's help there, yeah. but like yeah. there's people going to that doctor weekly, monthly. Like, you know, I think one of the funniest things that every time I go to the doctor, they're like, you're the same weight. And I'm like, yeah. And they're worried. <laughs> they're like, they're genuinely yeah. worried. They're like, cause I'm not gaining weight like everybody else. They're like, there must be something wrong with me. I'm like, how random, how often do you see that? They're like, never, nobody's ever no. the same way. They're, everybody comes oh, yeah. in heavier. I'm like, I remember hearing that was years ago. I heard that from my doctor and I was like, oh my God, that would make complete sense. Like the average person is always heavier when they go to the doctor. Just let that sink in. And like, that just shows you how unreachable some of these people are. Like yeah. you have that conversation. Well, and the it, it goes to show you what are even our misconceptions of aging, right? Because mm. it's not, it's not necessarily that, the way we understand aging and the physiological changes that take place through aging and how quickly it happens 
maybe more due to our lifestyles and less due, due to biological aging itself, right? Mm-hmm. Like, which is super interesting. It, it, and I think it would be an amazing study just to see if you have people like us that have been doing this 20 years, what does aging look like to us compared to the normal population? And I say this, and this is not an egotistical thing, but I say this as a 43 year old where I get all the time, people can't, uh, like they just don't understand they're 43 years old. They just don't get it. And at 43, like, you know, just learning a new sport or climbing a massive mountain, just doing things that you haven't ever done before, doing them for the first time this late in life, people don't understand it. The amount of times that... Tony's yeah. bounced off his bike or his skis, or he gets back up and at you know did rim to rim I'm to rim. Like, well, that's, as, I'm not good at much except for crashing <laughs> and bouncing back up. But but at his age, like like his age, but people <laughs> see, age, like that. But, but people people would look at him and go, but you're 43. Like you shouldn't be doing those things. Like, no one ever knows yeah. I'm 43, and that that's not an egotistical thing either. Like half no. the time I tell people, they're like. Shut up. I mean, now I have a great beard, so it's a little bit less con, but like it's one of those things. It like CrossFit, I think we first got attention for like creating a CrossFit body, right? Like we created this yeah. soma type that exists now that like you can see a CrossFit in an airport, right? Like, I see them all yeah. the time. I'm like, I know those lats. Keep mm-hmm. doing some kidding yeah. pull-ups. They're like, you know, it's not just because they got Metcons on. And that was like the first thing to get attention. But to your point, Mike, yeah. like for sure, we've been doing this 20 years, and soon it'll be 40 years, right? Like and that will be possible because, you know, at 60 and at 80, I'm still being able to do these things. And that's, I think, you know, we're not even to the magical part of this whole thing. Like, we quit worrying about what HQ is doing and this and that and franchises and all these other things. Like, we haven't even hit the actual heyday of this thing when there's like biological proof, epigenetic proof that like, hey, better decisions, like, you know, spending time in a CrossFit gym for the better part of two decades quite literally adds 60 years to your life. That's, that's, that's not, that's not, that's not real. I don't know if that's true, but I bet you it's not that far off. Mm. Dude, it's interesting. And it's, it's the perspective changes. And we've talked about this where, man, I don't train and and work out in the gym to be better in the gym. And so I could spend more time in the gym. There was a time in my life where that's what I did. Right. All of us. And now it's, I work out so that I can do things out of the gym. And it's interesting because exactly what you just said and what we're talking about, it all goes back to Greg's original definition of health. And yeah. it's like, it's, it's work capacity across broad time modal and age domains. And it's being in those later years in life and still being able to accomplish work, whatever that work might be. And it doesn't always have to be in the gym. It's just that those behaviors that are established in the gym with that community, with the people around you, can now be applied to other areas of life and like to me like that's what health is man health Mm -hmm. is at 43 not only having to express this stuff in the gym it's being having the time finally and the point of my life where i can apply it to other areas and enjoy life with the people i love and the people i cherish and the people my friends my family my loved ones like that's that's health and there's yeah. so many people at our age that don't have that ability. And we talked about agency. Like they just don't, they don't, they, they, they can't make those decisions, whether it's due to some mental health issue or physical health issue to enjoy life the way that they should be enjoying life at that time. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very agency. interesting thing. Agency is just abundance versus scarcity, right? At its core, like if you think about it and like, dude, so much of fitness is like, you know, to get to, to quote unquote my age, right? But like to not have to just have to exclude things, right? Like that in and of <laughs> itself, you know, I know that I can send Mike a text message and be like, I got a dumb idea. And he's going to be like, that's going to suck. When are we leaving? Like, you exactly. know, and, 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 and that is the point of all of this thing. And like, Greg, was so clever as to make it, you know, regularly learn and play new sports. The most overlooked part of fitness in a hundred words by every single person, maybe meats, vegetables, nuts, and seeds might be the most overlooked, but like, <laughs> you know, learn and play new sports because dude, that's all it is, right? It's like, 
the point of all of this, the singular point of any of this is to do more of that stuff, not to do more of this. And, and I think we all did. Listen, I'm just as guilty of like the multiple sessions a day. Cause like if, if A plus B equals C, then D, E and F must be better. Right. Like, yeah, and you have yeah. to do that to realize like, this is not better. Cause I feel way better yeah. at 43 than I did at 33. And by the numbers, I was definitely quote unquote, like fitter back then, but like now I'm doing yeah. more with my fitness and doing less fitness. And there's something to that. And I think all of us, like we were the first adopters. We were the early adopters. We were the initial mavens of, of CrossFit, to, so to speak. And like, you look at all of us, all of us are now Spielers out riding bikes. I'm falling down things. Like we're doing long hikes. Like we're sending them stupid text messages. Be like, you want to run across the Grand Canyon? No, but okay, I guess I'll try. Yeah, I'll do it, it though. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, and I think we become, you know, it's tooting our own home, but I think we become that new point that people pay attention to. They're like, Dude, these people are doing crazy things. And then you realize like, oh yeah, they're all just still doing CrossFit. That's how they got there. And like, you know, maybe that's how we get some of the attention away from the games. No, nothing offense to the games, but like, you know, get that attention back to like the point of this thing has always been the thing, which is your life. You got one your shot. At it, right. And that's it. And yeah, that's hmm. all it is. And that's so it. much it's of all that. about your life. Yeah. So much of that. And the, 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 the there was only it was it was natural for the health conversation to come to the forefront for that exact reason because like, dude, it can't be just it can't just be squandered on those of us who did find our way into the gym. Like, we have an ethical and moral obligation to get those twenty. There's way more than twenty five million, but to get those other people so that they can experience this too. Because like, I wasn't healthy when I started CrossFit. I was fuck forty six pounds heavier than I am now. Like that version of me with no change would not have just finished rim to rim to rim would not have you know been through diesel day or mountain biking or skiing like i would have been like everybody else been like i haven't skied since i was 18 i can't ski again i'll blow my knees out with no data to back that up but i can pick them back up and i can ski 100 plus days last year and i can go mountain biking a thousand plus miles and i can go do those things like and guess what i do 20 minutes of crossfit every morning that's it you know there's there's something beautiful about waking up with a purpose and i think there's there's a lot of purpose and meaning to passing that on to other people yeah. and it's it's our responsibility to Sorry, do yeah. that right like absolutely and i think i think that's that's what it's all about and then you know i i i think crossfit health and the mission of the medical society and then crossfit for health and the summits and, and that education and really bringing this together has the ability to do that and it's right. it's going to be a top down approach with physicians and a bottom up approach with with affiliates and we'll meet in the middle and we'll we're going to do some pretty badass things for sure we just got to got to work together to do it i love it mm. it is our duty i mean we it, we've got to do something with 10 years of burpees i like <laughs> pay it forward right and they, the and it and i'm i'm grateful that you are the one running the, the ship because like very few people know crossfit better than you do like i think that that part of it is super cool and so i, I think for that reason it's much more welcoming to the people in the audience like the affiliates and and because dude i don't know how it's so funny it's still funny to me like how many people are like dude, half of our clients i think has taken your seminar so like they're all like <laughs> like if, if mike g is back and they're like i don't even know what he's talking about with this health thing but i'll listen because like, last time well, he talked, he talked the whole world right like and so i think you're the oh, perfect man. person for it and i'm glad that you're the person doing it and, and i'm glad that you're putting in the work to, to put together the summit you know you know and it's for everybody that's listening to this like it, it might seem cliche and it might seem a little bit onerous but like it is your obligation it is our duty to take this thing and not to because we want everybody to do crossfit it's not has nothing to do with actually it has everything to do with knowing the value of it once they experience it and like and i think a big first step of that is is getting to things like the summit and realizing like and being reminded being reminded more yeah. than told that you already yeah. have the solution to your problem and like we'll be there i promise if you go to the summit and you still don't understand how to apply this to your business you could just tug my shirt sleeve and I will help you break it down into tangible, actionable things that you can actually go get the right people in the business who will yeah. pay you the right amount of money to do the right mm. amount of work for them so that you can change their life and then you can do it over mm. and over and over again. I love it. I love it. It is our duty. And I think that's, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. We should, we should be excited about, about that, right? It, it shouldn't be something that stresses us out and it should be something that motivates us. Like, Hey, we, we want to figure this out. Let's figure out how to reach more people, yeah. uh, you know, and 
Yeah, I think that's great. That's awesome. Well, I can't wait to see you there, man. It's gonna be great. I mean, the Van Zandt Hotel is cool too, and Austin is always fun. So it's always, yeah, yeah, it's always yeah, good. yeah. It'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. So awesome. Awesome. Well, I think that's a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night to well, good night. I don't even know what time it is for Lisa over there. I have she texts <laughs> me. I'm like, what time is it for you? She's like, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It all just blurs into one. What yeah. time is it though? I just thought it's uh five oh two now for me. Oh the good. fact that you guys have gone off daylight time pushes everything back an hour for me. So it's like holiday time for me till April. Then it goes earlier again. But yeah. But you're worth it, Tony. Yeah, we need to stop the we need to stop the daylight savings thing. It's yeah. for real. So it's come real. <laughs> so thank you, Mike. It's been an amazing you. conversation. We could probably go for hours, but um <laughs> I I know that uh there's still some some big areas that we, we want to cover with you. So we will um get you back on again for sure. And uh yeah. to have uh more chats about the big important stuff and the impacts that we can make. So Thank you for that this morning. And uh, thank you, Tony, and enjoy the rest of your birthday. I mean, I've just yep. been on more calls with you guys, so it's fine. Yeah. Well, there you go. What, what more could no, you Thank want? you both so much. Thank you yeah, both yeah, so no much. Worries. This has been great. Yeah. Happy awesome. birthday. And yeah, I'd love to come back on. I think even, Tony, like we talked about last time, there's probably some mental health stuff that we could dig into too a little bit for more, sure. which I think would be yep. really interesting. But that, awesome. That's thank you so much. For the whole episode. All right. Thanks. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please remember to like and subscribe on your favorite platform. And if you know an affiliate owner, a coach or entrepreneur that would benefit from hearing our conversations, please share this with them. We love the feedback and support we have from you guys, our audience. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can find all the useful links in the show notes. We would love to connect with you. Keep doing the great work.